Alu. Uh, he's actually my senior pastor, right? He's here to share from the room. So Pastor Cornelius, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pastor. Yeah, morning. so happy to be here with you. Yes. We have come to the end of 2023. We still have uh, four more days to close this year. Yeah. Uh, thank you, AGPC, for the honor to be here to share God's word with you this morning. I would like to entitle my devotion message as a call to obedience to prepare for the exciting new year ahead of us. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with heart full of gratitude for your love, all your provision over the years 2023. And this morning, Lord, as we gather here, we ask you to open our heart and our mind to receive your word with gladness. Holy Spirit, help us to be faithful, to follow you wholeheartedly in this coming new year. Even there may be time that we do not understand your plan fully. We pray, O oh God, you will grant us the strength to be obedient servant in every aspect of our life. We thank you, O oh God, for all your goodness and all your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So let me just start with a story. Uh, there's a master who hired two men to pull water out of a well and pour it into a basket. So after a while, one of them say it was foolish because the water ran through the side of the basket and the labor was in vain. And the other one said, well, we have been paid with a good salary to do it. So anyway, it's not our business. It is the master business. But somehow or other, the first man was not satisfied. And he just threw the basket down and quit. And the other man went on doing the job. And when he got to the bottom of the well, and he learned the purpose of his labor, because there was a precious a diamond ring that had fallen into the well. So the master has planned the whole thing. And he was looking for a reliable servant who will obey him, even when they did not understand his plan. So the worker who remained faithful to the task was rewarded because he worked on, even he did not understand the purpose. And I believe that this has been the heart of God uh, all throughout history. He has always been searching for a man or a woman who will obey him. And this morning, I would like to read to you from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4 to verse 5. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And this word that I command you today shall be on your heart. So in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, and uh, I give you a little bit of what's happening here. As the Israelites uh, are about to cross the Jordan to enter the promised land, and Moses remind them of who God is and what he has done for them and how God has uh, rescued them from Egypt and adopting them as his own people. And God provided for them in the desert and establishing a covenant with them at Mount Sinai. And he gave them the law. So in this passage, Moses introduces a significant term. In Hebrew, hear, O Israel. The word hear actually is translated as Shema. Shema is more than a simple act of hearing. 
it go beyond just hearing. It involve uh, actively listening with the intention to obey. It emphasize a commitment to live in alignment with the instruction given. So I believe that God have God has a unique purpose and calling for all of us, rather for each one of us in our life. And the call of God, first and foremost, is a call to obedience. So when God calls us, He calls us to a life of obedience. And in this new year, I believe that God not only wants us to hear His voice, but He wants us to listen attentively and obey Him. Because the call to obedience is the pathway to fulfill God's purpose for our life. And it's just like we are saying to Him, God, I will trust you enough to do what you say, even though sometimes I may not see everything. So when we obey God, we align ourselves with His divine instruction and His guidance for our life. So for the Israelite, obedience was the ultimate taste of their faith. And God actually demand Israel commitment to obey His voice. So in order for Israel to be what God called them to be, they have to obey God's voice and keep His covenant. And that is what God expected from Israel. If you read the Bible, you will see that God did not reason with them. God did not rationalize, uh, rationalize His direction with them. He did not... Uh, invited them to a question and answer time. He simply called them to obey. He said, hear, O Israel. So obedience is faith in action. To go where God called us to go. And to go where God said go. And to do what he said do. And to trust his provision. And knowing that God actually will be there before us. He will be on time. He will not be late. So obedience is faith in action. So we see obedience in the life of Abraham. Abraham did what God ordered him. Abraham was a man of faith. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 8, the Bible tells us that by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. So, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. If you look at the life of Abraham, Abraham was not a perfect man. He faced a challenging taste, a test. When God told him to sacrifice his own son, Isaac, and it was hard for him to sacrifice his own son. It's never easy because it was born to him when he was 100 years old. Think about this. It made no sense to him because God has promised him a great descendant that will come out from his, his, his uh, bloodline. But Abraham trusted in God completely. And he took Isaac and headed toward Mount Moriah. Because Abraham knew that God never made mistake. He obeyed God without questioning, even though it appeared that he had some very good reason to question God. And walking up to the mountain, Isaac asked the father, he said, Father, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Can you imagine how Abraham felt at the time? That struggle, that grief that he had. But listen to what he answered. He said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And God is faithful. He provided a substitute lamb for the sacrifice. 
So Abraham passed the most difficult test of his life to his obedience to God. And we all need to know that he was greatly blessed by God. But Abraham's journey to uh, the obedience was uh, actually marked by both successes and failure. He failed some of his tests and then he passed some of them. But from all of this ongoing struggle, test that he went through, and he learned who God is. God is faithful, God is powerful, and God is trustworthy. And uh, I believe that his ability to obey God was a result of his faith in God and actually is growing over the years of struggle and testing. And just like a weight a trainer who trained regularly to improve his uh, fitness level, and then he will increase uh, the weight that he lifts as his strength grows. So similarly, we will grow in our faith as the intensity and frequency of tests come in our life. So faith is an essential part of our Christian life because the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So our faith in God can be measured through our obedience. As I look back, I remember in a year 1991, my wife went through a surgery and the doctor told us that she need to be on medication for one year. And it was and it will be quite impossible for us to have children. And after taking the medication for six months, more than six months, I think, she encountered a lot of side effects. And one night, we attended a special meeting. A, a speaker that came from Africa. And during that meeting, God spoke to our heart to trust him for my wife's condition. And uh, we responded to the altar call. And we went out, we prayed together. And I remember on that night, I made this prayer. I prayed for my wife to have a new ovary because she went through that uh, surgery for both of her ovary because of the blood seed on both of the side of it. So after the night, the prayer, we choose to trust God. And by faith, she stopped all her medication. And not knowing what will happen. But we believe that God has spoken to us. And we have the peace. And two months later, my wife conceived. And God has given us two sons today. If you ask me, did we struggle? Yes, but when God speaks, your obedience is the visible expression of the invisible faith. God is patient and merciful with us, but one thing he does require of us is our obedience. And I want you to know that he does not require everything all at one time. Whatever level of faith that you may have right now, that is not the issue. The point is not how big our faith or the current level of your faith. But the point is our response to that call and to that test. Are we willing to trust Him? Even though sometimes we may not understand fully. This morning, are you facing any challenging situation? Is the situation help you to grow in your 
faith in trusting God? Or is your testing or your challenge cause you to grow or put you in a kind of maintaining mode? Obedience is crucial in our Christian life. Not because it is necessary for us to, to earn our salvation, to go to heaven. But obedience reveals the quality of our faith in God. And today, God still calls us. He still calls His people. Just as He called Abraham. Abraham did not realize what great thing God has in store for him when he answered the call. And I believe that when God calls us, He calls us to obey even though we may not know what will happen when we do not understand everything. We may not always be able to see His purpose immediately. But when we follow Him, we know that we follow a God of purpose. Amen. Faith, obey God even when we don't understand. And God knows what is the best for us, far better than we ourselves. Amen. So, obedience is our faith in action. Secondly, obedience is an expression of love. It is one thing to obey God when you believe that God will give you what you want one day. But the question is, will you obey God even if he never bless you with that one thing you have been asking from him. Think about it. When God put us to an extended period of waiting, our obedience to God will actually, uh, how should I say, reveal our real motive. Are you obeying God because uh, with that motive, and that you know that one day you will be rewarded. God will answer your prayer. Or are we obeying God because we love him? So in the Bible, obedience actually is all about love. Jesus said the only kind of love that is acceptable to him is our obedience to his commandment. The night before Jesus' crucifixion, he reminded the disciple of the connection between love and obedience. Let me read to you in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. And then in John uh, 14, the same chapter, verse 21, he said, whoever has my commandments and keep them, he it is who loved me. And he who loved me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And continue in verse uh, 23. Jesus answered him and said, If anyone loved me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So, Jesus make it clear that if we truly love him, we will show it by obeying his command. Uh, this is not so much of an uh, external performance where we try our best to do the right thing and uh, to earn God's favor. And I believe that obedience is birth from love. We love because God first loved us. So, when we obey God, it is actually our sincere response to God's love for us. And our intimacy with God is actually built on the foundations of obedience. And throughout the years, I have uh, learned that obedience and uh, through the obedience to God, it deepens my relationship with Him. In uh, 
I remember in 2010, when God uh, first called me to lead the campus ministry as a lay pastor, when uh, a pastor actually turned down the offer, I obey. I said, yes, I do not have any pastoral experience. And it was very challenging for us during that time. We struggled a lot. We went through a lot. My wife struggled with me just because we do not have experience in handling the ministry. But God proved himself to be faithful. We led that campus ministry for five years and God had blessed the ministry. And in 2016, when I, once again, when the church called me to lead the church as a full-time pastor, I struggled during that time. I was thinking that maybe too big for me. But at the end of the day, I said yes. And that was even more challenging. And we have many outreaches. We have many BM World pastor. I remember even during that first year, I struggle. I do not know how to lead the whole church with many pastors. They are there longer than me. And sometimes I feel even struggle to go to the church office. But through my obedience and love for him, in my first response, my faith has grown over the years. And when I answer that second, answer God and say yes to him in the second time, I know that God will not fail me. And as I look back, my love for God has grown over the years as I learned to obey him. If I have not responded to him in my first answer in 2010, I believe that I would not have said yes in 2016. And it is a small step that we can show that we love him, to obey him. And over time, and God can turn that small step in loving him and change it and make it a great blessing for all of us. In the book of John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 say, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandment are not burdensome. To obey God is not burdensome. It's not a, a, a burden, a, a big, a heavy duty. But this morning, let me say to you, it is a grateful response for all that God has done for us. Amen. If you have experienced His love, if you truly love Him, the Bible tells us, you will keep his commandment. And God wants your heart. He does not just want your work, your ministry, your service. God wants your heart. So we should never allow a kind of the idea of so-called uh, work based love 
to influence our relationship with God. And sometimes when we work more, we feel that hey, our love for God actually increases. I do not know about you. But obedience is not doing a list of religious things or even ministry. Our obedience should always be the result of God's love. It is never about our love for God, but it is all about God's sacrificial love for all of us. Amen. So, you may ask, what happened when we fail God? We try, but human beings are sometimes cannot be trusted. But God knew our shortcoming. God knew who we are from the very beginning of time. He knew us inside out. And that is why he sent Jesus. Because it is impossible for us to obey God with our own strength. Jesus is our perfect example. If we have Jesus live in us, obedience becomes easy. Because Jesus is the perfect example of obedience. Think about that. He will help us to do what we could not. When we invite Jesus into our life to live in us, and God sees us as he sees Jesus, fully righteous, holy. So, in a moment of our failure, our disobedience to God, we can just come back to him. We can approach his throne of grace with boldness. And we can openly confess our challenges, our mistakes, our failure. And we can pour out our heart to Him. And because we can be a very assured in our heart, we can rest in assurance that we have been forgiven because of Jesus. We have been restored. We are renewed. Amen. So we can always come back to Him. We don't need to worry so much about whether we 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 meet that 100% mark or 90% or just 50% passing mark. Because Jesus set the perfect example of obedience when he came to this earth to save us. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 42 to 44, let us read together. Saying, Jesus, he said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And here we can see Jesus, how Jesus Embrace obedience uh, deeply in his heart. It is not easy, obedient. I'm not saying that it's easy. Look at Jesus. He knew that he would suffer on the cross. But despite of uh, intense agony, he accepted the pain, that humiliation, and even that. He obeyed God. The Bible says that his sweat was like drop of blood falling to the ground. And I want you to imagine this, how earnestly and mournfully God, Jesus must have prayed at that time when he said, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus is God himself, but he came to this earth and lived a life of faith in perfect obedience to God. The four gospels show us that everything Jesus did, it was just like a series of obedience from the moment of his birth until the day of his death. Jesus lived in such perfect obedience to the Father. 
he said and he did everything according to the father will. He struggled, but yet he trusted God. He believed in God's plan for his life. In the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29 to 30. Mark chapter 12, 29 to 30. And Jesus repeat this great commandment again. And I want you to listen carefully this morning. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Amen. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This morning, can you hear the call of Jesus again? He said, if you truly love him, you will keep his commandment. Loving God means obeying his every command. Our love for God always starts with a small step. You may think it is not important, but that is what needed in every one of our life. Will you respond to him? Remember this. It is God who is calling us. We are just responding to his love. And sometimes, do you know why we struggle to love him? It's because we think that we are calling on him. The more we struggle, it's because the more we think that we are reaching out to him. But this morning, remember this. Jesus said, Here, church. Here, brothers and sisters. Here, with an intention to obey that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. It is Jesus that is calling us. Will you respond to his call of love? And throughout the years, my life was changed when I began to realize that how immeasurable love of God for me and this is because of God's love that motivated me to choose to follow him, to serve him, to obey him. Even though there are times when situations are tough, challenging, sometimes we cannot understand everything. Obedience to God is part of our worship to him. Obedience, can I say this to you? Is God formula. God desire and obedience of a child because he loves you so much. Not a slap. You don't obey God because you fear him, but you obey him because you love him just as a child loves our parents. Our obedience should be grounded in love not driven by fear. It should be inspired by faith, not indifference. So this morning, I believe that God is inviting all of us to love him, to our obedience to him. That doesn't mean that we will not have any struggle, but we are reminded of his love for us. We are to love God with everything we have. And this is what we are, were created for. We are all created for a relationship, a love relationship with him, a God of the universe. We are created with a love relationship with the creator and also our savior. We are created to love him and to be loved by him and in a love relationship with him. And I pray that in this new year, in the coming new year, God will bring you deeper into his love as you learn to obey him. 
And as we close this morning, is there any area in our life that you need to obey God? Or maybe has he had been asking you to forgive someone? Your family members, or maybe your friends, or maybe Mr. Partner, Colleague, or maybe this morning God is asking you to stop disobeying Him, to stop sinning in some way. And He wants you to respond to that evil because He loves you. If you are willing to take a small step, step today, God will make Himself known to you. It will transform your relationship with him in this new year. So what is it that God has been calling you to do? And maybe what is it that God is doing in you right now? What has God called you to obey today? And when is the last time you ask him, to reveal his purpose for your life. The question I want to ask you this morning is, how far are you willing to go when it comes to obeying God? When it comes to obey Him? Are there any area in our life where you're holding back you are keeping something. You are just struggling, ignoring his call to obedience. And I believe that this morning, we can ask God to increase that love by taking a small step today. To love him, start loving him. As Jesus said, with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Will you respond to him? Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, with a grateful heart. Acknowledging you are sovereign. We thank you, O oh God, for your love for us. This morning, thank you for reminding us of the importance of obedience as an expression of our love for you. Lord, this morning we come to you. Lord, we confess Lord, that if there's any area in our life where we are struggling, where we are hesitant to obey you, and this morning, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we want to surrender those areas to you. We ask you to strengthen us, to guide us, to help us to walk in obedience, even though when we may not fully understand and when we could not see everything in front of us. We thank you, God, because you are our perfect example of obedience. Thank you for the sacrifice that you have made on the cross. That help us to know that ultimate love and obedience that you have for to the fathers in heaven. Likewise, this morning, help us, Lord, to follow your footsteps, to love you with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, Lord. Give us the courage to say yes to your calling this morning, even though when it requires 
for us to step into that unknown. Lord, we pray this morning, reveal to us if there's any areas of our life that we are holding with sin, struggle, unforgiveness, disobedience, that we need to confess it to you. And we pray for your grace. Help us to repent and to walk in the alignment with you, with your purpose in our life. This morning, Lord, I pray for every one of us in whatever struggle, challenges, uncertainty, or tests of faith, I pray that you will strengthen us. Your grace is sufficient for us, that our obedience will truly be the testimony to your faithfulness. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to empower us, guide us in every area of our life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a blessed new year. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. And before we uh, go into prayers, in respond to Pastor's message, let us uh, have uh, Pastor Pauline to lead us in your song.